so you guys I'm sure have seen at the headlines. Once again, Tank Davis has been up to no good and has had another run-in with the law. Now this video is not going to be my attempt to investigate or speculate what he has done or hasn't done. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the careers of fighters and the performances that they uh, give throughout the course of their careers. And this video kind of ties in to my most recent live stream where a couple of the guys were asking, what do I think of Tank Davis as a fighter? How does he stack up against his contemporaries? And yeah, just basically ask him for my, my take on Tank Davis. And for context, Tank Davis is a fighter who I've really um, always had high hopes for because I've been watching him for a good few years now. I think the first time I saw him was around 2015. And, you know, after you watch a lot of boxing, you like to think that you can discern talent from not so talented. And I remember the first time I watched Davis, I was like, you know what? This guy, I don't know if he's going to go all the way and be an all-time great, but I think it's a matter of time until he wins a title. And lo and behold less than two years later he became a champion um so i think when it comes to tank davis the ability the talent is and, and the potential is all there to see but he just seems to have this this issue i don't know whether it's a lack of self-control a lack of education bad company or maybe a combination of the three and plus more but he just can't seem to keep his nose clean and his career just seems to be, you know, more often we're talking about Tank Davis and, and his mischievous exploits outside the ring rather than predicting fights and giving him credit or criticism for his performances. And as I say, it's frustrating because when I see Tank Davis, I see a fighter who has a good degree of skill, um, great athleticism, great power has a real entertainment factor as well, but just can't seem to stay zoned in and stay focused on his career. And instead is just getting into these silly, ugh, this is nonsense out the ring. You know, if you go onto Tank Davis's Wikipedia page, there is a title, uh, the section titled legal issues. And it's just, it's just case after case after case of recent years where it's just, silliness that's the only way i can describe it and now some of these things are more serious than others um but i've even seen videos over the years where you see tank davis at you know a, a pbc fight night or something you know you get the the es news behind the scenes or the fight hype those guys um and you see tank davis and he's usually drunk or you know usually a bit merry to say the least and I remember there was this one video where he like a fan came up to him and asked for a photo and he smacked the guy's phone out of his hand. This, this, this like conduct of Tank Davis really is, it's kind of foul in some cases. And now this isn't, you know, I'm not coming from a place where I believe myself to be a paragon of virtue. Um, I leave that to Connor Ben actually, because he's just tweeted to Javonta Davis saying, um, what was he said? Someone like, don't throw stones if you live in a glass house, little man. Conor Ben, I think he needs to wind his neck in. He is not someone to be a uh, virtue signaling. So um, he thinks he's giving Javante Davis a taste of his own medicine. He's got to sort out his current situation. But anyway, that's a, a tangent. Javante Davis, very entertaining, very capable. Someone who I think has the potential to have a, a Hall of Fame career and really make waves and do big things, but just can't seem to separate from the gutter, you know? And that's that's kind of been a running theme of Davis's career because when he turned pro, when was it, nearly 10 years ago, he was a young, he was a teenager. He was a young kid and come from a rough neighborhood in Baltimore and... You could see that because he had the ability that he has, 
he'd be able to change his life. And that's what boxing does for a lot of people. You know, that's why when people talk about, oh, boxing should be outlawed, it's too dangerous for a sport. Well, yeah, it is dangerous. But sometimes with that danger comes the ability to completely change your life and set yourself up and reach reach highs that you couldn't reach through any other avenue compared to being stuck in the streets with all kinds of low lives and losers and and that's that's dangerous enough as it is but you're not going to get anywhere a lot of the time especially these days you know this isn't back in the day when being some kind of some kind of gangster was actually a viable career option and you could get away with it you know this those days are gone um sorry to burst your bubble if you're a young impressionable uh person growing up in an urban area you know it's just just drop it don't bother um but anyway Javonta Davis looked like he was on track to change his life but he just can't seem to separate from that background and you know some people are going to say oh, it's the company he keeps it's uh, the associations that he has you know I think I, I start to think that some people they don't want to live a quiet simple honest life and that's why they're always in drama and I suspect that that's the case with Javonta Davis he um he's probably fallen into this hood celebrity hood star mentality where you're famous like you're you're known like you actually you're actually a celebrity you're a famous person but you haven't separated from the the street life that you grew up in and ultimately figures like this they do how can i say a lot of the time they don't end well because when it comes to that kind of street life that hood life sometimes just being associated with it is bad enough you're going to get dragged back into it sooner or later you know based on what i've seen throughout the course of my life people i've known if you want to enjoy success and you want to have a long productive and fruitful life you have to separate from that kind of negativity and i think based on what i see you know i'm just an outsider looking in like we all are Javonta Davis is a long way from separating from that kind of background. So, um, yeah, very frustrating because Javonta Davis, you know, I'll go as far as saying he's a special fighter, but is he just damaging his own potential? Is he limiting it by, you know, not separating from this lifestyle, this world star lifestyle? And, um, you know, talking about legacy and careers, I know Hatman touched on this in his video about Javonta Davis, but there was this headline going around from a recent interview, I think, one, two, three weeks ago, maybe. And it was basically Javonta Davis talking about how he doesn't plan to be in boxing for much longer. And I didn't watch the interview. You know, I've got to come clean, so take this with a pinch of salt. But, you know, usually when fighters talk about not being in boxing for that much longer, they typically insinuate that it, there's not much left for them to achieve. They don't really have much more of a desire to to carry on because they don't feel like there's anything left to do, achievement-wise. Um, assuming that that's what Davis is insinuating, like Hatman, I'm kind of scratching my head because I'm looking at Javonta Davis's resume, his body of work, and I think it's fair to say that it's thin, you know? It's um, it leaves a lot to be desired, and I know there are going to be some some half wits, probably <laughs> probably Tank Davis hardcore fans. They're going to say, "Oh, how many titles have you won out match? You know, stay broke, loser." Well, you blockhead. I'm not comparing my achievements to Tank Davis's. I'm comparing Tank Davis's achievements to the achievements of his contemporaries, his contemporary contemporaries like Devin Haney, who's younger than Tank Davis but is undisputed champion. Also, Vasyl Lomachenko, who is a multiple weight, multiple time world champion and seen as one of the best amateur and professional boxers in boxing history. So yeah, compared to those guys, Tank Davis's resume, his body of work doesn't stack up too well. So if he's planning on leaving boxing anytime soon, before he's had any real meaningful fights, 
Yeah, I think that'd be um, ill-advised if he's looking at it from a leg legacy perspective. Because, you know, how many meaningful fights he really had? In my opinion, it's probably Jose Pedraza. Because Pedraza's a good opponent and has gone on to do stuff afterwards. Um, that fight was back in 2017. So it's nearly uh, six years since that fight. Uh, he's done bits and pieces here and there. Yorio Kasrian is a decent name, but he was shot to pieces. Leo Santa Cruz, another decent name, but way smaller and brought up. Um, Isak Cruz, uh, good fighter, but really a trade fighter. Like Not many casual fans know him. And then most recently, Rolando Romero was probably the fight that had the most attention on it, but Romero, nobody really gave him a chance of being competitive with Tank. And we saw how that fight ended. Um, so it's like it's very thin uh, achievements from Javonta Davis. And I know he's been a champion. He's had a couple of belts. But in this day and age of boxing, it's really the easiest time it's ever been to become a champion. So does it really mean that much? So as of now, I think... Javonta Davis has a long way to go before he's even come close to fulfilling his potential. But will these exploits outside the ring, this, this nonsense outside the ring, will it prevent him from reaching his potential? That's the question I'm asking. So uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you agree with my uh, sentiment that Javonta Davis is not doing himself any favours? Or do you think it doesn't really matter? He's just so talented that doesn't matter what he gets up to outside the ring. He's just going to go in and bowl over the competition anyway. Leave it down below. But for now, thank you for listening and I'll catch you in the next video.